Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today I'm going to be telling you all about 20 lesser known horror movies currently included with Prime Video. So very similar to the Tubi video that I just released, there's a link to that video in the description. This is gonna be 20 lesser known horror movies, as well as a quick montage of 10 other more well-known horror movies currently on Prime Video. I'm not gonna spend time talking about those because you've seen them or maybe heard me talk about them on the channel before. This video is sponsored by Nirvana CBD. I'll be telling you more about their stuff later in the video, but let's go ahead and start all the way at the back with my number 20 pick, Silent Hill. Now this is based on a video game series by the same name. And while the movie aesthetically has a lot in common with the video game, it's also different in a lot of ways. And this is a pretty decent horror flick, but it leans much more heavily on terrifying visuals. In fact, just in terms of the look of the movie, this is one of the more frightening ones on this list, but it does lose the story a little bit because it's leaning so heavily on all these makeup and visual effects. They're fantastic and very creepy. You could watch this movie with the sound off and be terrified. And the reason this is not higher up on the list for me is I feel like they went so over the top with some of the visual effects later in the movie that it actually made it less scary because you can clearly see all the CGI and it didn't really rely as heavily on some of the more scary elements that classic horror movies have. In fact, it abandoned a lot of those and I felt like it suffered because of it. Still, it does make the list. Now, one that is not a fantastic movie, but that gets major points for just being surprising is Better Watch Out. This takes place at Christmas time, and it's about a horny 13-year-old boy just desperately trying to hook up with his babysitter. But some people are trying to kill him like in any sort of slasher movie. However, there is something very different going on in this movie than what you're used to. This movie disguises itself as one thing, it is another, and like I said, it gets major points from me for that. By the time it's all said and done, this one's not particularly special, but it does get those big points for a big surprise that I thought was pretty enjoyable. One of the weirder ones on this list is The Neon Demon. This is directed by Nicholas Winding Refn, who's most famous now for having directed Drive. The Neon Demon has that sort of electric look and feel that Drive had, but this one's way weirder. It's super strange and super dark. There are some very odd things that happen in this movie. Do not blame me if you watch this movie without taking my warning seriously. This one has weird, wild elements in it, including a very bizarre cameo from Keanu Reeves as like a motel owner. And his story ultimately never goes anywhere. And honestly, a lot of the stuff in this movie doesn't really go anywhere. Only a few of the core elements end up sort of following to fruition at the end of this story. That said, it gets points for weirdness. If you like super weird movies, there's a very good chance you've seen this. If it somehow has escaped you, definitely watch it. If that does not sound like you at all, you may want to steer far clear of the Neon Demon. One of the smaller movies on the list, just meaning budget, size of the cast, amount of effects, is We Are Still Here. This is a haunted house style movie that is very effective because it does the opposite of what Silent Hill did. It relies much more heavily on the spook factor without a lot of visual effects. Now there are some in there, this is not totally deprived of them, but this one is successful where Silent Hill fell flat. Ultimately though, it is a smaller movie and not everything works perfectly, but it is a surprise of a little kind of hidden gem horror movie that delivers a lot more than you would expect from it based on the first 10-15 minutes. Now, Overlord is a movie that has been on Prime Video, and I believe Hulu as well, for quite a while. But there is another movie that came out way before it that has a lot in common with it. It's called Outpost. This has a really pretty stellar cast. Not a lot of big names, but a lot of really great character actors that do deliver some really good performances here. And this is a Nazi zombie movie. There are tons of them. 
and I find this to be a pretty decent one. It's about a group of mercenaries hired to go in and storm this outpost sort of underground base where there was obviously some very dark stuff going on and it is a great sort of horror sci-fi movie. I wouldn't really classify this as a zombie movie because it doesn't go in the direction that so many zombie movies go. It's very much more of sort of a monster movie. If any of that's ringing your bell, Outpost definitely delivers. It's just not fantastic, which is probably why you haven't heard of it. Mommy, where are you? Okay, now we're at number 15 and we are starting to step things up a bit with Hole in the Ground. This is a very recent release about a mother and her son that are hiding out in a house out in the woods. She's trying to escape some domestic violence and the young boy sort of goes off into the woods and when he comes back, he doesn't quite appear to maybe be the same person. So you get some body snatcher type elements. It's difficult to tell whether it's psychological in the mother's head, whether it's psychological with the boy or whether something supernatural is actually happening. Happening. This has some very creepy visuals and again while it does have some big special effects and it does have some wow factor at times the movie largely leans on creep factor and does a good job of sort of building tension and mystery. It's very confusing as to what's happening but it's because the mother the main character that you're following is confused then so are you and you begin to learn things as she does rather than before or after. Triangle is about a group of people shipwrecked or marooned out in the Bermuda Triangle and they seek refuge on an old spooky cruise ship. Sounds a little bit lame coming out of my mouth to be honest and the setup is a little bit lame. That's all it is is these people they're they're in the Bermuda Triangle so weird stuff starts happening but the direction that this one goes is very interesting. It's not just a bunch of jump scares. There's a lot of like complexity to this one. Not too complex, this isn't a Christopher Nolan movie, but it does work really well in this setting. It kind of keeps you guessing, keeps you wondering, you're never quite sure what's happening. I really dug that aspect, as well as it being a little bit of a brain teaser of a movie. Again, not too much, most of you are gonna figure this movie out, but it does work those muscles a little bit more than most horror movies do. Now, I am personally a big John Carpenter fan. I love his movies. He has done some of the best horror movies ever made, movies like Halloween and The Thing. And one of his lesser known ones, and maybe for good reason, is Vampires. This stars James Woods as a vampire hunter. In fact, he leads a whole gang of vampire hunters. And this has some really cool elements to it. They're going after vampires with crossbows and they've got all this equipment and they kind of know what they're doing. They're suited up in leather and all that. I mean, it's a rock and roll kind of a movie, but it does have some good John Carpenter elements mixed in as well. Plus a, just a good performance from James Woods. This one though, does feel very dated. It came out in the early 90s and it feels like it came out in the early 90s. If that's not for you, I don't know that this movie has enough additional value to make it worth watching, but if you do like movies that have that early 90s vibe and maybe you love John Carpenter and you just never saw this one because it is one of his lesser known movies, it's well worth going after. Quite possibly the strangest one on this entire list is Braid. Now, I actually had the honor of interviewing the director, Mitzi Perone, on one of my podcasts. That's right, there is a Flick Connection podcast. No, I haven't done episodes in a very long time, but they will be resuming soon. But I found Mitzi to be a very interesting person, and her movie is even more interesting. This is an acid trip of a horror movie, quite literally. You never see anyone taking acid, and it's never suggested, but it's very hard to keep up with and hard to figure out what's going on. But this one's extremely dark, extremely weird. It's probably geared for maybe the smallest segment of you watching right now. So I'll just describe it as this. It's like a female lead clockwork orange on acid. It's the best way I can describe this movie. If that sounds like you, then I can guarantee you this movie is for you. If you hate the way that sounds, this is another one to steer clear of, but we got a lot more to pack in here. So I've talked a little bit about effects and sort of their role in horror movies, and one that has some of the best practical and makeup sort of monster effects 
is Pumpkinhead. So this is actually directed by Stan Winston, who obviously also did the creature design, and he is the most famous creature designer in movie history. He's famous for designing the creatures in Aliens, Predator, Jurassic Park, and Pumpkinhead is a really frightening looking demon. And this is just a fantastic Halloween watch. It's got this Halloween horror house vibe all throughout it. In terms of something with like a good Halloween 80s vibe with some great sort of just terrifying visuals, Pumpkinhead just checks all of the boxes and it has maintained itself as a cult classic amongst horror fans for decades because it checks so many boxes so well. Now, I know I'm talking about a ton of horror movies and horror movies can be stressful, life can be stressful, and if 2020 has not stressed you out more than any other year, good for you, but I have been dealing with stress for almost a year now taking CBD supplements. I find them to be very effective at sort of mitigating anxiety and generally just putting me in a better mood day to day without making me feel dosed or drugged. And Nirvana CBD is not only a sponsor, they are the brand that I have gravitated to and love the most for several reasons. One is a lot of their products come in higher doses than others, which works well for me. I just need to eat one gummy and I'm good to go. Two, their gummies are delicious. They are the best ones I've ever tasted. And I also like that they have a lot of other supplements that include CBD. They have one with turmeric, they have one with melatonin. They have lotions and oils that are great on the skin. I using them all the time and I think they're fantastic. So I strongly recommend them. If you're someone that's already using CBD in your diet, try Nirvana. They have small packets. You don't have to buy a bunch up front. But if you're someone that's just interested in it, again, I recommend going with some of the smaller packaging because you can try it out see how it does for you, and then order more if it's a good fit. But if you do shop from Nirvana, please use the link in the description because I will get a kickback from it and it helps the channel grow. And it also helps our sponsor know that you guys are coming there from Flick Connection. But let's go ahead and move on with the rest of this list. The night's big eclipse is now well underway. I feel a little weird just dropping you out here like in the middle of wherever we are. The House of the Devil feels like a classic 70s horror movie, but it's only about 10 years old. But this is about a babysitter who is in this old creepy house babysitting some kids and weird things start to happen. Now this one, I must tell you, is a very slow burn, but it's so well put together and feels like such a throwback. I mean, it feels like it came out on the heels of Halloween. It really, really does. It's very genuine in that respect. I enjoyed it all the way through just as a movie nerd, but then it does deliver. It's very creepy. I would relate this one to sort of, again, like Halloween with a lot less action and chasing than Halloween, but I would also compare it to movies like Rosemary's Baby. It has a lot in common with older horror flicks, and from a creative standpoint, they nailed that aspect of it. It's one of the better ones that I've seen that tries to emulate something from the 60s or 70s. Now my next pick is loosely a horror movie, but it's kind of a fan favorite amongst people that know about it. This stars Matthew McConaughey and Bill Paxton, and it was directed by Bill Paxton. It's called Frailty, and in this, Bill Paxton plays a father who's raising a couple of boys on his own when he starts to get visions from God telling him to kill demons, and his oldest son is not buying it. This is very dark subject matter. It's extremely creepy. It is not gonna feel like anything else on this list or really anything else that you've seen before. Matthew McConaughey is super intense in this as well. If you've never seen it, but you like what I'm saying, make this for sure something that you watch during the month of October this year. Now we're gonna talk about one on the list that has the most action packed into it out of all the ones on this list. It's called Afflicted. This is actually from the same directors that did Freaks, which a lot of you I know watched on Netflix recently and liked. But this is about a couple of guys that are backpacking across Europe and they're taking lots of footage of their trip and then something happens to one of them and he starts to change and they start to document all of those changes and it gets super creepy. There's weird body horror in this and like I said, there's action. This guy begins to be able to jump really far and run really fast and they're capturing all of it and it just begins to escalate. I was really surprised with how sort of crazy this one got and it still manages to work really well. 
This is a fantastic one that'll just get your blood pumping. Yeah, it's gonna scare you a little bit. It's got some jump scares, but it's far from the most terrifying one on this list, but it's certainly one of the most fun to watch. One of my favorite little lesser known throwback movies is Eaten Alive, directed by Toby Hooper, who is most famous for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now this has very similar vibe to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if not a little more wonky. This one's got a little bit more of a funky kind of vibe, the kind of thing that Tarantino would and has lifted from for his movies. So I definitely think like diehard Tarantino fans should check this movie out. I think you're gonna find a lot of little things that are surprising that you really like about it. But this is about this demented motel owner who is torturing his guest and he has this giant alligator in a lake right next to the motel that enjoys eating his guests. And while Freddy Krueger is not on this list, the guy who plays Freddy Krueger, Robert England, who is horror movie royalty, is actually in this. But I will say, if you don't like older movies, this one does have some dust on it. It's got some years on it. It has not been remastered the way a lot of more classic horror movies have. So it certainly looks a lot older than, say, even the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but that also is kind of part of the charm. It's gonna be a must watch for some of you if you consider yourself to be any kind of like a horror movie buff. This is a must watch. Even if you end up not really liking it, you need this under your belt. If you don't, if you like just sort of newer, fresher things, this is not gonna be the movie for you. All right, my number six pick actually stars Bradley Cooper and Vinnie Jones. And this is from the mind of Clive Barker, who's most famous for Hellraiser. And I just mentioned one of my favorite Clive Barker movies on that Tubi list, Nightbreed. But The Midnight Meat Train is about a guy who's killing people on the subway. And Bradley Cooper, before he was really a household name, is a photographer that begins to start following this guy. This is another one. I was surprised at how crazy it got and also surprised at how well it worked. But I'd say Bradley Cooper fans definitely need to watch this because it's just kind of fun to see him in this crazy horror movie from before he was famous. Fans of Vinnie Jones should definitely watch this. Vinnie Jones is a badass in it. And just anyone that likes Hidden Gem horror movies. I mean, if you clicked on this video, there's a very good chance you're gonna enjoy this, particularly leading up to Halloween. Now, before my top five, here's a quick one minute montage of 10 well-known horror movies that I highly recommend currently available on Prime Video. And I've talked about every movie on that list at least once, sometimes multiple times on previous videos. If you're new to the channel and you like videos like this, definitely click that subscribe button and be sure you click the little bell icon. That way you get notified when I put out new videos like this one, but different. All right, my next two pick feature vampires. I didn't mean to group them together. It just sort of happened that way. But Stakeland is a post-apocalyptic movie featuring vampiric zombies or zombie vampires or however you want to do it. They're not like Dracula lurking around in the shadows and talking to people before they kill him. These are just rabid, bloodthirsty animals, very much like zombies, that are out for blood. And there's a handful of people left on Earth that are just trying to survive. And they're walking around with giant stakes across their chest. This one just has a cool vibe all around. In fact, it's such a cool flick, they made a sequel to it that is not that great. It feels a little bit more like a made-for-TV thing, whereas Stakeland really stands alone on its own and is a very sort of creative idea that is really well executed. If you want to watch a post-apocalyptic movie with vampires, Stakeland is absolutely where it's at. 
And then one of my favorite vampire movies that I first discovered on streaming services just in the last couple of years is From the Dark. This is about a couple whose car breaks down, which I know sounds cliche. You get that out of the way quickly. And then as they sort of try to seek help at this farmhouse, something is after them and they learn very quickly that it is afraid of the light, but their light resources are very limited, making things very creative as this story unfolds. I loved this one. It's got this Nosferatu vibe, but it is scary. You really are fearful for the people trying to escape this farmhouse. You're very much with them in the way that this movie was filmed. I love that. I thought the vampire, the fact that you don't get to see much of it, it was super creepy. And it's just a, really a, an effective horror movie that I know a lot of people have missed. This is one that definitely as well. And this is one that will appeal to the broadest audience, I think, of people who are after horror movies. So if you haven't seen From the Dark, make sure to add it to your watch list for Halloween as well. And I could say the same thing about my next pick, The Loved Ones. This is from Australia, and this has some Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. It's dark, it's bloody, it's, it's just chilling to the bone. But this is about a young woman who wants her dream date to go to the prom and decides to trick the guy, drug him, and proceed to torture him. It's very dark, very twisted. Texas Chainsaw Massacre fans, I'm not giving much away by comparing the two. They're not that similar, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre fans will dig this movie. If you're not into slasher stuff and sort of, for lack of a better word, torture porn, this is probably not gonna be the one for you, but in that genre, this is another one that's just really well executed and not very well known, at least not here in the US. All right, my number two pick is actually two movies because I find the sequel to be just as good as the original, Grave Encounters. Now this is another found footage setup, but what I think works so well about this is you're following a group of ghost hunters. And it's a little silly, they're kind of goofy characters, but this isn't really a horror comedy, but it's got plenty of laughs in it. But they're going into this asylum to try to capture footage of some supernatural happenings. And then gets absolutely crazy with this one. Even though a lot of the movie is colored in night vision green, it still works really well because you don't expect the kind of crazy stuff that's gonna happen with this movie. It almost feels like something that you've seen and the people behind both movies, they're, they're equally as good in my opinion and maybe should even be watched together at least in consecutive nights. The people behind this nailed it. They knew what they wanted to make and they created something that's gonna set up expectations and subvert them and give you genuine scares and not just one kind of scare either. There's jump scares, there's long ones that build up, there's tension, there's laughs like I said. There's so much packed into Grave Encounters. Odds are most of you are gonna to wanna to immediately watch Grave Encounters 2, and it's so cool that they're both available on Prime right now. And then my number one pick is not for everybody, but it's my favorite, so I put it at number one, and I know a lot of you love it too. It's Bone Tomahawk. Now, you do have to be very patient with this one, but the payoff is huge. I'm not gonna talk about the payoff anymore. I'll talk about the setup. This is a Western, and it starts off as a pretty basic Western. Kurt Russell leads this posse that's going out to find some people that were taken potentially by natives, and their journey is not a very safe one. They run into issues and have to perform some minor surgery on the trail, so there are horror elements throughout, but it's not until they sort of get to the end of the journey and then get thrown into a survival situation does the movie really turn into an epic horror movie. I love the way this one panned out. I love the director. I'm loving everything that S. Craig Zoller has been doing, including Brawl in Cell Block 99, which is also on Prime, and Dragged Across Concrete, which I believe is on HBO or Cinemax at the moment. Love the guy's work. That's why it tops the list. Let me know what horror movies you plan on watching during the month of October. Let's also thank the Patreon supporters. They have been a great source of support for the show. If you're interested in becoming one and getting some of the benefits over on Patreon, 
There is a link in the description. Just go check it out and see if it's for you. If not, you may want to become a channel member. There's a link to that in the description. There you can get access to exclusive content that I post right here on YouTube just for channel members. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this episode and you will see me on the next one.